Reports.net is a really popular job scheduling framework that we can leverage in our .NET applications, including ASP.NET Core. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In a previous video, which I'll link up here if you haven't seen it yet, I was showing you how you can set up Quartz.net using one way that you can go configure all of these different things, including the scheduler and SQLite. In that video, I pointed out that we can go set things up more specifically for ASP.NET Core. So in this video, I want to show you a different way that you can go set these things up much more integrated into ASP.NET Core and follows a lot of patterns that if you're familiar with ASP.NET Core, this will feel very familiar to you. If that sounds interesting, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's jump over to Visual Studio and check out our ASP.NET Core app. Okay, so the application that we have on the screen is a very simple ASP.NET Core app. It does have a really trivial uh, hello route. We're not even going to be using the route in particular. It's not really going to matter at all for Quartz. In the previous video and this one as well, I am going to be using SQLite as the backing store because I'm using persistent storage for Quartz jobs. That's not really going to matter in this case. If you want to go watch the previous video, I'll show you how to go set up Quartz with SQLite and you can change the different data base backing stores. It's just using SQLite because it was quick and easy. Same concepts apply, but go check out that previous video if you want to see how that works. In the previous video as well, if I go into the project file, I mentioned that we had these NuGet packages that we need, but in this video, this package right here, quartz.asp.net core, this is going to be the one that you're going to want to add in. And that's because the other two, specifically these two, these Quartz packages, these are just the ones that I needed to have Quartz in general, not specifically with ASP.NET Core. For me, I was using SQLite, same as we're going to do in this video. But this one is specifically for hooking up to the iService provider in ASP.NET Core. Jumping back over to program.cs, you'll notice that now that we have these Quartz packages added, if we go to Builder Services Add Quartz on line 6, so this is new. We get this nice extension method with this fluent syntax, this builder pattern, and then we can get the Quartz configuration as a callback here, right? So we get Quartz configuration passed in, and we can start configuring this thing. In the previous video, I also mentioned that Quartz does leverage config files, so you don't have to do this all in code. If you want, go have that config file. Quartz.net has all of this stuff documented on their website, so you can see all of the different properties that you can go set and the values that they'll take. Personally, I like doing this in code first so that I can play with it, understand it, and then worry about configuration files and, and my deployments all separately after the fact. Before we move on, this is just a reminder that I do have courses available on Dome Train if you want to level up in your C Sharp programming. If you head over to Dome Train, you can see that I have a course bundle that has my getting started and deep dive courses on C Sharp. Between the two of these, that's 11 hours of programming in the C Sharp language, taking you from absolutely no programming experience to being able to build basic applications. You'll learn everything about variables, loops, a bit of async programming, and object oriented programming as well. Make sure to check it out. These settings here on line 9 and 10 are just to play around with to see that I can set them. In the previous video, I mentioned that if you wanted to load these properties up so you can use the config file like I was mentioning, or this properties collection is kind of like a dictionary that it's going to read in those key value pairs, but you can set them in code as well. Line 11 till 17 here, this is going to be setting up your persistent storage. So again, previous video, we showed how you can go set this up, but this is specifically for ASP.NET Core. And we use this sort of callback syntax where when we want to go configure, X is going to be the config that we have, and then we can go set the different properties on that config specifically for the persistent store in this block here, right? So use properties is going to allow this collection of properties to be on the the job that we're going to have access to. I'm using SQLite, like I mentioned, but the other providers that are available, if you wanted to change that, you could go do, let's see, Microsoft SQLite, MySQL, Oracle, Postgres. So they're all here and I'm sure there's NuGet packages to do more, but this is the block where you're going to want to configure that. And I'm using the serializer here. So that was the other NuGet package I had to include, but together, this is going to add Quartz as a scheduler. The other part that you're going to need is going to be the background service. So this Quartz hosted service is the other thing you're going to want to add because without it, 
it's not going to know to go pick up the jobs and run them automatically. It's just going to kind of sit there and not do anything for you. This second part is really important to have things up and running. You'll need both blocks together, but the settings that I have in here, again, these are just different options that you can play with. This is going to say that we're not going to run the hosted service and schedule jobs or anything until the application is fully up and running. And then I guess on termination as well, we'll wait for jobs to complete. So there's other settings that you can play around in here. These are just the ones that I have for this demo. Not super important. Just calling out that you have some configuration. Again, both of these set up ahead of time before we go and build the app off of the builder. We set our minimal API up here. And then this next part is going to be what I showed in the previous video. It's just going to be having a job that we can go trigger. You'll notice that we don't have access to the scheduler like we did in the previous video, so we have to go ask for it. And this is going to look a little different because before we just said, hey, we have a reference to the scheduler directly. And here we don't. So how do we get it? Well, we can't just ask for the scheduler. We can't use this get required service scheduler. We need to ask for the scheduler factory. And the scheduler factory has a method that we can call to get the scheduler. So if you are going to be playing around with dependency injection and you want to get access to the scheduler, you do want to ask for the scheduler factory in particular. Once you have the schedule factory, then you can ask for the scheduler itself. But once we have that scheduler, then we can go schedule our job directly onto it. I'm going to spice this one up a little bit. I think Copilot, that seems pretty good. With simple schedule, we'll add a little interval so that this job will repeat. we will do it every two seconds. So five seconds after the application starts up, we will go run the test job that we have every two seconds, repeats forever. And if we scroll down a little bit lower, this is a really simple job that just says, hello world. We're ready to go run this thing, prove that it works. I want to call out that I've already set up the schema for my persistent store. If you have not done that and you're following along, you will want to go run the SQL that is what you're using for your backing store. On their website, quartz.net, if you go to their GitHub, they do have a database folder with the scripts that you need to run to quickly show you. Oh, I've already moved it down to here. This one here is going to be what you need for SQLite. Like I said, you're not going to want to pause this video and try to copy it character for character. Go to their GitHub. They have all of the SQL that you need to go run. With that said, we have our schema set up from ahead of time. We have all of this config good to go. We should be able to go run this thing. If our app's starting up, I'll pull the console to the front. There's the hello world. And then again and again. So this will now keep going every couple of seconds and print out to the console. So... This is essentially how you go set up Quartz.net, specifically with ASP.NET Core. We get it added into the hosted services and everything. It is going to run this in the background for us. And in this particular case, use SQLite as the backing store. Okay, so if we have a quick look at our test job here, it's obviously really simple. I'm just printing hello world to the console. If we wanted to do something more complicated, if we wanted to parameterize this, how can we go about and pass other data into our quartz jobs? Well, if you want to see how that works and the different options that we have available, you can go ahead and check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.